orientation for programs in Austria and Germany. My name is Grace Glancy, and I am the Student Services Officer for ICEP's programs in Northern and Central Europe. Today I have with me a wonderful ICEP coordinator at one of our member universities, Stephen, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, thank you, Grace. My name is Steve Sikras, and I'm the ICEP coordinator at Leibniz University at Hanover. Uh, we're one of the partner universities in Northern Germany. And as ICEP coordinator, I'm the primary point person responsible for the administrative and program management of ICEP here at the university. So what that means for students uh, who are going abroad, my team and I provide advising services, select students for the ICEP program, and uh, then coordinate with ICEP. And then for our students coming to us from abroad, uh, we, I coordinate with our incoming uh, student services office on the admission process and welcoming here to Hanover. Awesome, thank you, Stephen. And we'll hear more from Stephen in a second. In this video, we will be reviewing topics regarding your host countries, including culture and daily life, academic matters, health and safety before you go, and keeping in touch with ISEP. We will begin the presentation by providing you a brief overview of daily life and cultural expectations in both Austria and Germany. Keep in mind that both countries are very different, and we encourage you to do your own research about your host country, as well as the town you will be staying in ahead of time. Our goal with this pre-departure orientation is to give you a glimpse of these cultures to give you a head start as you prepare for your time abroad. In general, Germ Germany and Austria do have some general similarities, including the importance of punctuality in both cultures, so you should be aware of your timing to all academic and social events. For Austrian culture, you should make use of German courses on offer at host institutions, even if only at an A1 level. A couple of words can go a long way and make it easier to navigate daily life in Austria. It is important to note that Austrians do not often ask how someone is unless they wish to hear a detailed account. Austria is famous for its cafes and there are coffee houses all over the city, many of which have outdoor terraces that are popular in the summer and give the cities a Mediterranean feel. Visit the cafes for coffee, hot chocolate, ice drinks, and pastries. A variety of mouthwatering traditional foods, both savory and sweet, are waiting for you to explore, including, and please uh, keep in mind my pronunciation here, Wiener Schnitzel, uh, salads with pumpkin seed oil, Salzburger Nockerl, Linzer Tort, and Sacher Tort. And now I'm going to pass it off to Steven to talk about German culture. Thank you. So I'll move on to some of the, uh, the German highlights. So like Austria, German is the official language of Germany, and there are also dialects or, or regional varieties in Germany. Um, many people in Germany speak English, so you do have the chance to uh, use your English in, in daily communication as well. It's going to vary, though, uh, how well people speak English, so just keep that in mind. Germany really values the outdoors. Hiking, parks, nature, it's a big part of life here. So if you're a nature lover, Germany is a great place for you. Germans have a very direct communication style, and this just is, is part of the culture here. Uh, Germans are also very well informed, and in talking with people in conversation, they like to exchange ideas. They like to hear what you think about things. And so don't be surprised if they ask your opinion on a range of different topics, and they may even challenge your opinion, and that's just, uh, that's just normal here. You may have heard that Germans are, they love rules. And I wouldn't say so much that Germans love rules as much as Germans like systems. So for example, when you're crossing the street, it's expected that you wait until the light turns green before you cross the street. And it has a practical aspect to it in that by doing so, you ensure that traffic flows well, there are no accidents, and so that's kind of an example of a system here in Germany. There's a lot of different rules or systems, and my advice to you is just to simply observe what people do. Watch how others react in situations, how they behave, and that's a good way just to sort of learn how things are done. 
just like Austria, we also have a very rich culinary tradition and history here in Germany. Baked goods, so breads, cakes, pretzels are a huge part of German culture, and you'll find bakeries on almost every corner. So definitely try those while you're here. Uh, sausages or Wurst, there are countless varieties of them in villages and towns. You may have heard some of them, such as Bratwurst or Bockwurst, Currywurst. There's tons of different types of Wurst out there. Dünner kebabs. Dünner is a uh, Turkish specialty, and it reflects kind of the immigrant culture here in Germany. So Dünner kebabs are a very popular snack here in Germany or, or lunchtime meal, and you can find them in countless uh, kiosks and, and restaurants here in Germany. Beer. I think Germany is quite known for its beer. It has a very long beer brewing tradition. And so just like with our breads, there are many different types of beer. Many, each town or city has several breweries. And so if you're a beer lover, great place for that as well. So interpersonal relationships and communication. Uh, Germany does, and Austria both, tend to be relatively uh, formal in situations where you're first meeting somebody, uh, where you perhaps don't know somebody that well. Uh, so formal greetings, a handshake or um, a nod is, is quite uh, typical in Germany and Austria. Um, both countries, it's important when you are first meeting people to use the formal title, so Herr or a Frau, so Mr. or Ms. And to not be surprised that that formality may stay for a while um, when, you're, when you're communicating with people. With students, it's a little bit different. With students, it tends to be much more relaxed, uh, much more informal. So you're not going to use Mr. or Ms. with other students, but professors, staff at the university, uh, perhaps neighbors, uh, that will be pretty typical. One other thing is don't assume that your professors and staff will always be checking up on you. Uh, in Germany and in Austria, that is a, we presume students are adults. And so if the presumption here is if you need something, that you'll come to us and ask for it, and then we'll assist you. So housing, what does typical housing look like? Typically, uh, students have a furnished room and it's a single room. So shared accommodations are not very common. Um, most uh, residence halls or apartments will have a shared kitchen, a shared bathroom. Uh, one thing to be aware of is if you're in a private apartment, not all apartments have Wi-Fi. So that's something to be aware of. And those students then will perhaps use the uh, internet on campus or maybe purchase a data hotspot uh, that may then make sense to purchase a uh, German SIM card or Austrian SIM card so that you have your own data plan. Every university is a little bit different. Every city is a little bit different. So my advice would be to take a look at your ISEP acceptance package and that you can find out details on your, on your housing accommodation uh, situation. Meals. As I said before, Germany, Austria have great opportunities for, for those who like to, uh, to eat out. A few tips. Uh, tipping is, is actually relatively standard. So uh, tipping here in Germany, for example, is on average about 10% uh, compared to countries like the United States where it's typically 20%. That's a fair bit lower than here. But on average, we tip about 10%. And a lot of times we'll just round the bill up. Another thing to know about eating out in restaurants is that the uh, waiter or waitress will not automatically bring the bill to you. Usually you have to ask for it. So you say, Rechnung bitte oder ich möchte bezahlen, I'd like to pay. But just be aware that if the bill doesn't come to you, it's probably because you didn't ask for it because they don't know if you might be planning to order something else. When you're shopping, uh, one thing to be aware of with when you're shopping is that uh, shopping bags, so a plastic bag or a paper bag to take the groceries home that you purchased, 
will not automatically be given to you. Uh, you can purchase them at the counter. They're usually around 10 to 20 cents, or you can purchase a bag that you can use multiple times, made out of cloth or made out of plastic. But they will cost an extra fee and you pay for them uh, along with your groceries. And then in terms of the dormitories and, and residence halls or apartments that you stay in, they will have uh, cooking facilities, as I said, and they may or may not have pans, plates, uh, dishes, and so forth. So that's something you need to check with uh, at the individual uh, student accommodation or residence hall. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Technology while abroad. If you would like to continue using your home country cell plan, please make sure to inquire with your provider to understand roaming costs, as these can be quite expensive. It is now most common for students to purchase a SIM card with a local data plan, and then mostly just use WhatsApp, which is very common in Europe. Please check with your provider to see if your phone is unlocked to make sure if there will be any issues while abroad. And you may also choose to purchase an inexpensive phone to make phone calls with only. So just think about which option is best for you. As Stephen already mentioned, in regards to internet and data, check in with your housing office about internet availability. You may have a restricted amount of data, um, but you can always inquire with your host coordinator where you can access Wi-Fi on campus. Um, and it's also fairly common to find free Wi-Fi spots throughout populated cities. So finances, both Austria and Germany use the Euro. If your host distributes a stipend to you, you will likely need to open a local bank account. If you are having trouble opening a bank account, don't worry, ask your host coordinator or your student buddy to help you open the bank account. Some universities even set up a field trip with all the international students going at once to set up the account at the same time. Please keep in mind that it can take several weeks for stipends to be dispersed after your account is set up. So please come prepared with funds for the first several weeks to the first month of your program. If possible, it is recommended that you have a small amount of the local currency before you arrive or once you arrive at the airport. And it is also a good idea to carry some cash as not every restaurant or shop will accept cards. Sports and leisure. So I think probably everybody knows that soccer is, or um, uh, European football, or football is the dominant sport here in Europe. Certainly that's the case in Germany and in Austria. And Germans and Austrians are, uh, love their, their, their soccer teams. Um, other popular sports here, of course, uh, handball, volleyball, basketball, uh, tennis, and so forth. But also sport uh, types like uh, CrossFit, yoga, uh, fitness clubs are also widespread and very popular here. So if that's something you do uh, at home, you'll be able to do that here in Germany and in Austria as well. The universities usually will have uh, discounted sports services or sports centers. So unlike in, let's say, Canada or the US, uh, those are not part of the standard student package, so to speak. Uh, they're not covered by the general student fee, but students here pay an additional fee. It's quite low, but there's an additional fee to use the gym, uh, the pool, and so forth. And uh, as I said, they're, they're quite reasonable. Also, the international offices often will organize trips and excursions for students to see different cultural things in the area, hiking trips. And as I mentioned before, Germany and Austria are great places if you like outdoors, if you like hiking, uh, water sports, so uh, you're in the right place. Holidays and vacation periods. Uh, one thing I want to say about Germany and Austria is that we love our festivals. So regional or city festivals like Oktoberfest, Schützenfest, Volksfest, here in Germany, or I'm sorry, here in Hanover, we have something called the Maschseefest, which takes place at the end of July. And there's a large lake in uh, Hanover called the Maschsee, and there's a, a big festival around that. So live music and performers and uh, food, and it's just a really cool event. And these types of festivals are all throughout Germany and Austria and uh, at different times of the year. 
So when you're when you're here, check out some of the different local festivals. Carnival. Carnival is uh, a celebration. It's commonly called fashion here. And it's a celebration with street parades, people dress up, and it takes place uh, in the time before uh, the season of Lent. There are two national holidays to be aware of. Uh, Austrian national holiday is when Austria declared its, uh, its permanent neutrality. Um, and Austrian national holiday is on October 26. And then there's German Unity Day. So German Unity Day is a day when the former East Germany and former West Germany join together to or reunite to be uh, what is today uh, modern Germany or the current Germany. One thing to be aware of with some of these national holidays like German Unity Day is they're not as grandly celebrated as some national holidays such as July 4th in the United States. So if it seems a little low key, that's just kind of normal. Uh, so the Germans put a lot of uh, energy into their regional and city festivals, less energy into some of the national holidays. But one of the really cool seasons uh, of the year is Advent. So that period before Christmas, the month before Christmas, and there are Christmas markets throughout Germany and Austria. And these are just amazing. So if you're here in that during that time of year, definitely check out uh, one of the Christmas markets. It's just, it'll be unforgettable. And then a few different uh, interesting facts that you may or may not know. Um, there in Germany, there are over uh, 2,100 castles. So Germany was previously uh, kind of a conglomeration of little princedoms and kingdoms and uh, dukedoms, so little, uh, little principalities and, and so forth, duchies. And so there are numerous castles throughout Germany. Some are in ruins, some are still being lived in, uh, some you can visit. So if you are interested in, in architecture and, and castles, uh, Germany is a great place for that. You probably realize this already, but Germany and Austria are in Central Europe. And Germany, for example, borders nine countries. Austria, uh, to the south of us, borders eight countries. And from these two countries, from Germany and Austria, there's so many places you can go and explore. Uh, this is a great place to be in Europe. Also, Germany has the, or I'm sorry, Austria has the largest ice cave in the world called, called the Eisfriesenwelt. And so if you happen to be in Austria, whether you're studying there or not, uh, you should definitely check that out. Thank you, Stephen. So we're just going to talk about culture shock real quick. Uh, finishing up our overview of culture, it is important to bring culture shock into the conversation as every international student will experience culture shock in one form or another. In this iceberg representation, there are many components of culture that are surface level. We can see them immediately once we travel to a country or we may have heard about stereotypes before we arrive in our host country, such as food, how people dress, the language and so on. However, there are often many unseen belief systems, customs and cultural values that take time to understand as you immerse yourself in that culture. As you go through your time abroad, you may experience some high and some low points. The first few weeks after you arrive are often described as the honeymoon phase. You've spent so much time and energy to get here, and now you just want to soak it in. You'll try new foods, you'll meet new people, and you might even get some of the more touristy trips out of the way. During this period, you'll be charmed by many of the differences, especially the ones that you expected. After that is the negotiation stage. After a few weeks, you may begin to feel frustration and irritation towards the pieces of your new country that don't meet your expectations. You'll notice that things are not entirely the way you pictured them, and you may have trouble finding your footing. This could mean stumbling over a foreign language, homesickness, not quite understanding the public transit system, which happens to all of us, or not finding close friends right away. Keep pushing on and you'll begin to truly relax and find comfort in your new surroundings. Some of the differences that you were originally frustrated by are no longer consequential, and you may even begin to understand the deeper reasons as to why citizens from your host country act speak and dress the way they do. You'll find new appreciation for these differences and may even find parallels within your own home country. The next phase is moving on. 
you understand a richer complexity to the cultural nuances in your host country, and your routine feels more natural. Daily frustrations will likely still take place, but remember this is a normal part of the human experience, and they may even be a sign of your adapt adaptation. Please keep in mind this process is not linear with a determined start to finish. Think of it as a circular process that may occur many times and with varied levels of intensity. Remember that your peaks and valleys do not define you, however, but how you recover and learn from them each time. You may even experience reverse culture shock once you return home, which I know for sure happened to me as well. <laughs> okay, and we have some lovely reflections from past ICEP students. We encourage you to review these previous ICEP student testimonies when you receive a PDF version of this presentation. But we will now be moving on to academics. We will now review the academic systems in both Austria and Germany. Please ask your host coordinator if you have any questions regarding the academics in either country. So an overview of the higher education systems in both Austria and Germany, and then we'll get into the specifics of both countries. You should expect to receive less academic guidance than in other countries, especially in the United States. Individualized learning is emphasized. There is often a large amount of outside reading. Students study hard for exams. Many courses will have an important final exam, which will determine a large portion of your grade. However, there tends to be fewer assignments during the semester. For the university academic calendars, it's especially important to keep in mind for the fall, as most programs do not end in Austria and Germany until mid to late February, and an early departure by more than a week or so is usually not possible. So please keep this in mind when you're discussing logistics with your home university on which program is best for you. Okay, so credit system and course load. Full-time students take about 24 to 30 ECTS. ECTS stands for European Credit Transfer System. Um, this might be quite different than what you are used to in your home country. It is your responsibility to know the transfer requirements of your home university. For example, 24 to 30 is usually equivalent to 12 to 15 US, US credits, but please check in with your home coordinator, home coordinator how that corresponds to your specific requirements. You must attend all class. You should save all course materials as you might need that at a later date. Please keep in mind that one academic year corresponds to about 60 ECTS credits that are equivalent to about 1500 to 1800 hours of study. One ECTS credit is about 25 to 30 hours of work. In order for you to receive grades and credits for the courses you complete, you must follow the instructions of your ISEP host coordinator and you can also find this information in the transcript section of your ISEP acceptance package. Keep in mind the number of classes you take per semester will vary depending on the number of credits granted per course. You will probably be taking a higher number of individual courses than you are used to at home, but you should not have more work overall. For example, you may elect to enroll in four courses worth two ECTS, two courses worth six ECTS, one course worth 10 ECTS, for a total of seven courses worth 30 ECTS. The classes worth two ECTS will spend less time in the classroom and have less work than the courses worth 10 ECTS. So while you're taking seven courses total, the course load can be comparable to that of an average full-time course load at your home university. Okay, so academics in Austria. Academics in Austria are independent and self-directed study. It's heavily emphasized. Courses are offered in a wide range of formats from large lecture type with professors presenting the topic and one exam at the end of the semester to smaller seminars involving continuous assessment, papers, and student presentations. Make sure when you are registering for your courses to select courses in the format that suits you best. Most of the examinations that you will take in Austria are single subject examinations, uh, end of semester, or continuous assessment based examinations in the in in the individual courses. Examination dates are to be arranged for you to be able to finish your studies within the given duration as stated in the curricula. You will also have to register online for exams. Examination dates, prerequisites, and the period of time during which students can register can usually be found on the host university homepage. 
While the style of instruction is less demanding on a daily basis in comparison to study at a U.S. institution, for example, independent study may ultimately be more rigorous in its demands. And the grades range in Austria from a one to five, with a one being excellent and a five being unsatisfactory. And now I will pass it over to Steven to talk about academics in Germany. Academics in Germany are, are similar to academics in Austria. So just like in Austria, we have here uh, lectures and seminars. Lectures tend to be uh, larger courses and a uh, professor will, will deliver a lecture or an instructor will del deliver a lecture on a specific topic. Um, there won't be a lot of interaction, a lot of uh, speaking by students in that, but there may be a separate discussion section that's offered that accompanies that course where a doctoral student or an instructor will then lead a discussion on the topics that were uh, presented in the lecture by the by the professor or the the instructor. Uh, there's also seminars and seminars are tend to be more they tend to be smaller and they tend to be more interactive. So there'll be maybe presentations uh, by students in those courses. Um, students will be accept, expected to participate more, speak more, uh, answer questions. Uh, you may even have small assignments, uh, group work or group presentations. So just like in Austria, you have kind of these large group, uh, large lecture halls and lecture courses, and then you have the seminars, the same thing in Germany. Our grading scale is also very similar. So remember that a one is excellent and a five is uh, on the other end of that, although unsatisfactory or poor, and then getting a one in a course is not that easy. So academics in Germany, uh, grading tends to be more conservative, and that means that it's harder to get a one, harder to get what, the, what they would call an A in, in, for example, the North American system. Um, so it's more common to have a two or a three even uh, in courses. Tips for successful studying. Um, as we mentioned earlier, in Germany, students are seen as adults and learning is much more independent. So don't expect that a professor will say, okay, for next week, please read pages 25 to 58. Um, he or she may say, you know, in the next course, we're going to discuss this or that. And then it's up to you to prep yourself on that topic to figure out where you would find that reading in uh, whatever textbooks have been assigned or other books that you may be reading to accompany that course. So it's really important that you kind of take the learning into your own hands and sort of develop your own plan for your studies. So if we compare it to, let's say, the US system, it's in many ways um, similar to what you might be doing in graduate school. Registration, uh, so just like in, in other parts of the world, students have to register for courses. And uh, the registration typically takes place in two steps. So students will, with their application to our university, for example, will indicate courses that they're interested in taking. And then when we forward that application on to the faculties, they'll review that and say, yes, the student meets the prerequisites for these courses or not. Uh, and those courses are all within one subject area, for example, economics or political science or biology. Um, after a student arrives at our university, then the actual course registration takes place. And at that point, students then can add courses, uh, a couple courses, perhaps from other disciplines with the approval of that, uh, that school or that faculty here at the university. Uh, it's important that you attend class on the first day, uh, and that's an opportunity for the uh, for you to, to introduce yourself to the professor. And a lot of times at that at that first day of of class, the instructor will then give out some information on what's covered in the course, um, what will be expected. Um, many cases, the professors will say, if we have international students here please stay at the end and they'll go over some of these details uh, with you again. But if not, then uh, please take it upon yourself to approach the professor or the instructor at the end of class and just introduce yourself as an exchange student. And uh, then he or she um, 
is just aware of that and may give you some additional information. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention too with course registration, it's important that you stay in contact with your academic advisor at your home university so that uh, you can make sure that whatever courses you're taking here in Germany or Austria uh, will be counted for credit when you get back home. So interaction with professors. Uh, this is another important topic and uh, several slides ago, I mentioned how interactions, communication in Germany can be a little bit more formal. And the same is true in Austria. So we'll use the titles like Herr Professor or Frau Professor. That formality is, is expected in, in higher education and universities. So when you're writing to your professors or when you're speaking to a professor, always use the, the Herr or the Frau and then the title, um, and then last name. So don't use first name. Don't presume that uh, first name would be will be offered to you. Um, in rare cases, a professor may say, you can call me John or Mark or, or Susan. Um, and then in those cases, then you know it's acceptable to go by first name. Uh, but that is typically uh, quite rare here in Germany. So be aware that it's gonna be a little bit more formal. <coughs> um, there are office hours, and so professors will have regularly scheduled office hours, and it's very important to use them. So if you have questions about the course, if you have questions about the material, please do make sure to reach out to your professors or your instructors. And if you're ever having trouble contacting somebody, you're, you've written emails, you've tried going to office hours, and you, you haven't had any success in communicating with them, reach out to your ISAP coordinator because we can then contact the faculty or our contacts in the faculty to help uh, to help us do that. Awesome, thank you, Stephen. Uh, we will now review health and safety reminders for your program in Germany or in Austria. So your critical health and safety resources, we encourage you to review the full health and safety presentation that will be sent to you. Review resources such as personal safety while abroad. You can find this information on our ISEP website. Follow guidance from your peers on how to keep yourself safe. Please make sure to pay attention during your orientation when you arrive on campus, as there will be health and safety reminders that are specific to your uh, host university. Please make sure to review your insurance coverage, as well as print out your insurance card that is in your ISEP dashboard. Please be sure to use the on-campus resources that are available to you, as well as the resources available to you from your home university while you're abroad. Uh, please make sure to save the ISEP emergency line in case of an emergency. However, if it is an actual emergency, please make sure to call the European Emergency Services number that is used in both countries for medical emergencies, which is 112. However, there are also country-specific numbers um, for any police-related emergencies, that would be 110 in Germany or 113 in Austria. So just keep that information in mind, as well as looking at your health and safety information on your ISEP dashboard and the resources and services available to you um, at your host university. Okay, so some insurance notes. All ISEP students attending programs in Germany and Austria must enroll in ISEP MER or Global Assistance Insurance at minimum. For Austria, the requirements vary depending on the university and term abroad, um, what insurance you are required to obtain. So please make sure to read your ISEP acceptance package and the medical requirements information um, for details on what is required. And for Germany, you are required to enroll in German national health insurance upon arrival and more information on this will be given to you by your host coordinators. OK, so no before you go. Now we're going to talk about some steps you should take before you depart for your program, including packing and communication. So for packing, for example, living in Austria or Germany during the winter, depending where you are located, you will need appropriate winter attire. Do you plan to ski while you're in Austria and Germany? I'm um, just keeping this in mind if you're going to purchase clothes when you arrive or if you're going to bring enough for all of the activities that you're planning. Um, you should also do research where you are going and the average temperatures of those locations. 
We encourage you to bring layers depending on what season you are going for, considering the activities that you will be doing or wish to do while you're there. Look up cultural norms and what is culturally acceptable in your host country. For example, considering sportswear or what you will need to wear if you visit any churches, and uh, maybe not just you know in your host country, but if you plan to travel in Europe. Uh, please keep in mind that it is often less casual, less casual in both countries um, than it might be in your home country. For toiletries, if you want a specific item, for example, shampoo or conditioner, make sure you bring enough as you might not be able to purchase it while you're in your host country. For medication, please be sure to bring enough for your entire time. If it's a prescription medication, please be, be sure to bring your prescription for the medication with you, including the chemical makeup or generic name in the case that you will need to uh, acquire more while you're abroad. Please make sure to put the medication in your carry-on, not in your checked luggage. In regards to electrical needs, we encourage you to avoid bringing straighteners or hair dryers. You can purchase these appliances at a relatively inexpensive cost while you're in Austria and Germany to avoid any uh, mishaps or fires in the bathroom, as has happened to me in the past. <laughs> uh, please make sure to check your pre-departure information in your ISEP dashboard to see if you will need to bring sheets and towels for your housing. And we also encourage you to bring paper copies of important documents in your carry-on as well as in your check bag, but please make sure you have access to these as well as having electronic copies as well. So before you go, you will need to pay your program fee 30 days before your start date if you are a direct student. So this is only applicable to direct students. Uh, we encourage you to check your data plan with your phone provider for international plans. Make sure you know the date and location of your on-site orientation. Write down your address of where you're going and carry it in your carry-on, in addition to having it on your phone, because you never know your phone might die and you might not have a charger with you, which we encourage you to bring that as well, as well as a converter. Have your host coordinator's email and phone number written down and saved on your phone. As I mentioned, please make physical copies of all important documents and keep them in different locations, the originals in the carry-on and extras in the checked bag and make electronic copies of all of these documents and upload them to Google Drive or another online storage system, just in case something happens. Okay, so keeping in touch, and I'm going to pass it over to Stephen for a quick reminder. So, uh, thank you, Grace. So, regarding staying in touch, please remember to update your, uh, provide your contact information tab before you leave for your program, so we know how to contact you if we need to. And also, uh, let your family know when you arrive uh, that you got here safely. So one tip is if you are using WhatsApp, once you get to the airport, you can turn on the, the Wi-Fi at the airport and just send them a quick, hey, I got here, doing fine. Um, and if you don't use WhatsApp, maybe get your family to uh, start using WhatsApp before you leave, because uh, that works quite well with the Wi-Fi here. So, but yeah, just keeping your, con your family up to date that you're here, that you arrived well, um is really appreciated thank you Stephen. definitely important to save that information in your contact information tab on your icep dashboard um so please make sure you do that in regards to connecting with icep students we want to hear your story so we encourage you to use social media to connect with other icep students and connect with icep uh, there is a facebook group there's also the opportunity to be a digital ambassador. So if you have any questions about being a digital ambassador or want more information, definitely let me know. We also have this information on our website. We have a Twitter, we have an Instagram. So we encourage you to stay connected and use hashtag ICEP study abroad to share photos and updates as we really wanna know more about your program and how much fun you're having um, while you're in Europe. So please definitely share this information with us. And thank you so much to everyone uh, for joining our presentation today. I know that Stephen and I both are super excited for you all to go on program. Thank you to Stephen so much for joining us today and sharing insight on you know, life and expectations in Germany and Austria. And I know that we are all excited for you to embark on this journey. Um, so Stephen, I'll let you have a few closing words. Sure. So yes, yeah, so I just will close with, uh, we're really excited to, to welcome you here, uh, whether you're going to Germany or Austria, 
and uh, wish you a good trip and a great stay here. Awesome. Thank you. And how do you say um, safe travels and have a great time in German, Stephen? Ähm, gute Reise und ich wünsche euch einen guten Aufenthalt hier in Deutschland oder in Österreich. Awesome. What Stephen said. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.